All right, guys, day two, Mental Archive Boot Camp. I hope you're ready for today because day one of any of the type of workshops I do, if they're multiple days, day one is sort of just like an intro. It's designed to get you warmed up, to introduce you to the concepts. And day two, day three are to dive deep or to actually show you examples to take you deeply into the concepts that we introduced on day one. So we're going to get started with that. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a recap of what we're talking about here. Day one, like I said, we did the intro, right? Day two is about the connection between your mental archive and what I like to call the ultimate sales hack, which is trend combining. Okay. Everybody loves this topic because everybody at some level struggles a little bit with trend combining. There are some people who are just really naturally good at it, but most people for the most part have a little bit of a tricky time with it because it's not, it's not a super straightforward thing, but you're going to understand it a lot better. I can guarantee it by the end of today. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about applying your mental archive to multiple levels of your business. Instead of just design, you can apply multiple mental archive stuff to so many different things, to mock-ups, to listings in general, to so many pieces of your Etsy shop require a large mental archive as well. And, and I'll explain a little bit more about that tomorrow, but today we're focused on the connection of mental archive and trend combining. Okay. So I want to take a step back very quickly and just go over the definition of brain priming. Okay, so for those of you who are newer to me, you're going to hear me say a lot of things that you probably not heard anyone say before because I make up my own words and phrases in order to better and more accurately represent the types of concepts that I'm talking about, right? Because my methodologies are quite unique to me. I had to come up with them myself in order to figure out my way around Etsy when I first began because I wasn't learning from anybody specifically. I quite literally paved my own way. So these types of phrases are things I came up with to represent that stuff that I created. So brain priming is one of those things. It's the process of building your mental archive. So when you are brain priming, you're quite literally, this is this is just research, right? You're priming your brain as you're seeing things in front of you. If you're on Instagram, Pinterest, Etsy, whatever, your brain is absorbing things and it's being primed to understand what's currently in demand and to make connections that could be meaningful to your customers. This is the process of growing your mental archive. So brain priming, it's kind of synonymous with mental archive. It's kind of the how of you build your mental archive. Your mental archive is the noun, right? Brain priming is the verb. Basically, you could look at it that way. So when we're talking about trend combining, trend combining is what creates mega bestseller listings. And this isn't true in every case. Every single bestseller you ever see, you're not going to see has a trend combination, but most of them honestly do. And this is because trend combining or trend combing, as I accidentally write here, <laughs> takes two or more things that are in demand, two trends, or it could even be colors. It's just things that are in demand, right? Colors, fonts, trends, whatever, two things that are in demand and melts them seamlessly together into one design to create hyper trending designs. You can only create effective trend combos under two conditions. Okay. Most people hear me talk about this, or if you've read my book, Blank to Bank, my ebook, uh, I talk about it in there as well. People say, okay, cool. Trend combining. I'm going to go do that. And they jump straight to Canva. And then they're like, well, this is so hard. This looks stupid. Why is trend combining so hard? They're missing one or two or both of these elements, right? You got to have a large mental archive in order to effectively trend combine and do it in the way that creates a hyper demand bestseller. You got to have a large mental archive, meaning you have to put in the work doing the right amount of research. And you have to also thoroughly understand your customer and what emotionally connects with and excites them. Okay. A main issue when it comes to trend combining for most sellers is that they try to force it. Like I said, they read my book or they watch a workshop like this and then they jump straight to Canva and they're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make the most hyper trending design of Western cowgirl and clown core. And then they smash together this really weird design of a bucking Bronco horse wearing a clown wig or something. And they're like, 
for some reason, this doesn't seem like it would be hyper trending. I think Brittany was wrong about trend combining. <laughs> but the problem is they have a small mental archive. They're thinking too literally. They're not flowing. It's just forcing things together because they want to make some quick money and some quick sales. And if they think trend combining is the way to do it, it's like, okay, let's just smash these two things together and see if it works, right? They wonder why it's not happening, why it's not coming out quite right or downright terrible. When you've done the work and are a consistent researcher, trend combining happens naturally in your designs to the point where you probably won't even realize you're doing it, right? And I say this about a lot of stuff. When people are like, how do I do this? I usually always point them in a different direction and say, well, nail this first and this will happen as a byproduct. You guys have heard me say that before, right? I talk about like, you got to become an expert first and then your sales happen as a byproduct. You got to you gotta master demand first and then the sales happen as a byproduct, all that sort of stuff. It's the same sort of thing here. Once you've mastered your mental archive, which is sort of the same thing as saying you mastered demand, once you've built your mental archive, I should say, the trend combining happens very naturally. And, and I used this example yesterday, but in Wolf School, my monthly membership, when I'm doing design editing and I'm doing trend combos, the feedback I hear a lot is like I'm, people saying, I never would have thought of that. The reason you never would have thought of it is because you have a smaller mental archive. You have less reference points. You've made less connections because you've had less time doing research than I have. So yeah, you, you probably wouldn't have thought of it, because you don't have that stored in your mental archive. You don't have that information to reach into and pull it out, right? So I want to give you guys a little bit of a background. I talked yesterday about how I started with high-waisted shorts. Back in 2014, when my shop first started, I listed my very first pair of high-waisted shorts with a galaxy print. What you're seeing on the screen right now, I hand-painted this pair of shorts. And... It's a bunch of different fabric paint colors. I saw it, an inspiration picture on, on Pinterest, but I didn't see these shorts being sold anywhere. So I was like, you know what? I bet I could do this. I went to Michael's, got some fabric paint, tried out my luck with it. They turned out beautiful. I still think they're beautiful. And I sold my first pair within 24 hours, which was super exciting because in my head, I've always, you know, thought my thought process has always been pretty naturally entrepreneurial. So I was thinking about, wow, I want this thing, meaning high-waisted shorts and galaxy print, basically anything at that time in 2014 when it was blowing up. I'm like, I love and want more of this stuff and I can't find it anywhere. It makes a lot of sense, supply and demand, right? That if I put this on Etsy, that other people are gonna want it as well. And guess what? That hunch, that little hypothesis that I created based on what I knew about my own shopping habits, it was right. So I ran with that. I created everything that I could to cater to the same market of people that were wanting these galaxy shorts. I was like, what else can I do for them? How can I create more stuff that's going to resonate that they're going to be really excited about? I put together this little collage on a, a website that was called Polyvore. It was my absolute favorite website. It has since been bought out and it's completely different now, but you used to be able to piece different things together. So in order to kind of more directly cater to my customer, I would make these little collages and you would see this collage as one of my listing photos on the Galaxy Shorts listing. I wish you guys could still play around with this and do this on Polyvor. Um, the Galaxy Shorts with the little YSL purse and the little booties. And because my market was Raven Festival wear goers, they'd look at the Galaxy Shorts listing, they'd see this little collage and it would emotionally connect. They'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to Coachella next week and I could buy these shorts and yes, I could paint my nails navy blue. I could get a tank top that's similar to that. I could like totally embody this like Cara Delevingne, Delvine, however you say her last name, vibe that I see in this collage, right? Like it was this mega emotional connection that I was trying to create to get people excited, even more excited about my listing because they felt the whole emotion around it, right? So this little collage did a lot for me. And then once I figured out that people not only wanted Galaxy shorts, but it was just Galaxy stuff in general that they were interested in, the trend combining started happening. You guys, again, I did not call this trend combining back when I was doing it. I wasn't in 2014 as a 24 year old being like, okay, Galaxy shorts worked well. Now I'm going to trend combined mermaids with galaxy shorts. That's not what I, that was not my thought process at all. My thought process was just like, okay, people seem to like this. What else do they like? And Hey, let me 
try to put them together and see if they like that, right? I It wasn't until I reverse engineered how I did this that I came up with the term trend combining. And I just want to emphasize that because it's not, it doesn't have to be so formulaic. When people say, how do I trend combined? When you try to make it a formula and when you try to mash stuff together, that's when you're going to be forcing puzzle pieces together that don't fit. Instead, you got to think about, oh, customers seem to be searching for this. And I've seen that this is high demand as well. It might be cool to combine these and see if they like that too. When you make it less formulaic, stuff starts clicking and making a lot more sense a lot faster. So my thought process here at the time, I was also selling mer mermaids and galaxy print were the two it girls of 2014, right? When it comes to trends, mermaids and galaxy print anything. So I was like, I, I'm going to sell these mermaid shirts for people to wear with their galaxy shorts. And at first it was just solid purple mermaid shells on like the bikini top kind of looking thing. And then I realized those tops started selling well. People loved them. I was like, wait, why don't I try the galaxy print inside the mermaid shells? That would be so cool. And it makes a lot of sense because they're both kind of like fantasy based so I feel like that could really work. Guess what? It worked really, 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 really well. When I say really well, I mean, I made tens of thousands of dollars off of just these types of tank tops. Okay. And then I was like, what else are people loving from me? What can I take and make it galaxy? Because galaxy seems to work and have it make sense. I was selling mandala print stuff, another hot trend of 2014, the kind of yogi sort of stuff. All of this was targeted toward festival goers. I was doing a, I hand painted this tote you're seeing on the screen as well. I was hand painting white mandala prints on tote bags. And I thought, wait a minute, why don't I make this galaxy print? Guess what? It worked. So it's just a matter of identifying what people want and blending it with other things that people want that makes sense together. Okay. Uh, across. Another huge thing that was popular back then. I, I took a cross stencil. I was hand painting all of this one more time, I'll I'll state that again. I was hand painting it all and then just realized, wait, this would work with this. Why couldn't this work with this? It all worked very well. So one huge problem I see all the time with new sellers, and the reason why I wanted to show you guys these specific examples of my galaxy print stuff is because they do not run with what they're learning. New sellers don't typically run with what they're learning and they don't run with the data they're gathering. They're too careful. They overthink way too much. And they're terrified of making the quote unquote wrong move. But what does that even mean? What's, what's a wrong move that you could make? You put something out that nobody wants. Okay, I did that 708 times a month. <laughs> and it never mattered. It wasn't that I did anything wrong. It was part of the testing process. Right. So you're not going to get anything wrong if you're trying stuff. The only thing that you can get wrong is not doing things, is not trying anything. Right. So if I would have been too fear based with my galaxy stuff, if I would have sold those galaxy shorts and then said, OK, well, that worked. But I don't know if people like it with mermaids. I'm just not sure about it. I need to think about it some more. No, it was like, go paint it, try it, list it, sell it. And it did. So I moved extremely fast. The second I got information, the second I got data, the second I had a, a conversation with a customer that validated a hypothesis that I had about what these types of people might be looking for, I moved immediately because I never had a thought that something could go wrong. It's like, like I said, if I, if I put something up and it doesn't sell, I never think about it again. Who cares? If I put something up and it does sell, amazing. I have more information about what works and I can build out on that. So too many sellers do not run with their learning, with what they're learning. And they might gather data, but they don't do anything with it because they're like, mm, I'm not sure if I should do this or this, or even I'm not sure what I should start with, right? I have, I've gathered all this data. I'm not sure if I should start with this one or this one. And then they'll go on and on about that in their minds. Just pick one. It doesn't even matter which one, just pick one, right? So most sellers will miss huge opportunities right in front of their face because they're overthinking and they're scared to make the wrong move. So they don't make any choices at all. And they're stuck in this, uh, they're like going back and forth. They're stuck in this loop, right? We don't want that. 
So let's talk about the number one niche to dive into some examples here. It absolutely nails trend combining better than any other niche that I have seen on Etsy. Like truly they are brilliant. The sellers in this niche, I don't know how so many of them are so brilliant, but it's really true. You see constant non-stop bestsellers within this one specific category, like so many bestseller badges all the time. And it's not even like a flash in the pan. Sometimes like one time it had bestseller badge galore and then it went away. Like this niche always has bestseller badges. It's really, really crazy. The niche is faith-based Christianity niche. Okay. They know these people know how to trend combine. It is absolutely wild how good they are at trend combining. So this made to worship shirt, what they did here is they took a faith-based thing and it says raise a hallelujah in the corner there, super cute in script font. Uh, they made, they took faith-based and they made it band T, right? Band T's have been trending on Etsy for forever. And Christianity faith-based stuff is a really hot niche as well. They blended these two seamlessly. It looks so good. Bestseller, every decision that they made about this was the right decision. The color palette, the guitar, the wings on the guitar, the font choice, chef's kiss. It's so good, right? Uh, I have so many examples of these, by the way. Yahweh in the collegiate font, right? That We've seen that collegiate curved line of text in so many different areas. It's absolutely exploded on Etsy and beyond, but they took this collegiate curved trend and they made it Christianity slash faith-based niche. Absolutely brilliant. And guess what? This is a men's t-shirt. It's not just about women's stuff, right? I touched on this a little bit yesterday as well. There's so much room for men's stuff on Etsy. And this is a really great example. Simplest design ever, right? This is a white outline, a full white design. They just took collegiate font. They said, hmm, a lot of people are liking the collegiate stuff. This is an interesting format. How could I make it faith-based and have it make a lot of sense? Well, they did it. Be strong and courageous. They're taking the tiger sort of almost like Asian. Uh, tigers have been really trending uh, with this sort of like, I don't know, there, there's floral, there's distressed thought happening here, but then there's the crosses and it's a Bible verse. So we've melted a few things together here quite effortlessly. And it works very well. The colors palette, again, like we talked about in the last one, the font, this is trend combining at its best, you guys. These examples are top notch. Made to worship, or the stars were made to worship, so will I. This is taking mystical, making it faith-based. Under his wings, you'll find refuge, another Bible verse. This is kind of the band tea thing again, but in a very completely different way. All one color design. It just the only word I have is brilliant. The, the trend combos here are so brilliant. Don't worry about tomorrow. This kind of looks like a, a poster, but again, it's a Bible verse. Grow in grace. This one is taking sort of like the vintage floral trend. Love that. Transformed by Christ. This is the retro trend, but making it faith-based. We've got the butterfly in there as well. The cute little flowers, the retro font and color palette. So many good things happening here. And you guys see how effortless it is? You would never look at this design and be like, oh, there's, well, I mean, maybe you would now that you know what trend combining is, but before you actually knew what trend combining was, nobody looks at this and goes, oh, there's the butterfly trend, retro trend, uh, curved font trend, and pastel kind of color trend in that design. Interesting. Nobody thinks about that. It's melted together so effortlessly that when you look at it, you're just like, that's a design I want to wear. That design is so cute, right? Because it's got an emotional connection, but the average buyer has no idea why. They just see it and they think it's cute. But you as a seller and a designer, you know all the underlying stuff that's happening here. And it is totally and completely deliberate that you melted this stuff together. Another Bible verse here with the mystical trend. Love to see that. They use little pine cones. There's a snake. There's some floral stuff. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I hope you're understanding. Now that you're seeing the actual examples, I hope you guys are understanding trend combining on a little bit different of a level and that it makes something click when I tell you this is not something that most people would look at and then break down what they're seeing by trend. 
All we're feeling as shoppers is emotional connection. Your job as a seller is to tap in and understand what those emotions are. So when you're creating, you can put them all together to create this final product that really emotionally speaks to people, right? So next we're going to get into some brain priming together. And I'm going to show you real life examples straight from Etsy of some, some designs that are more so they look like they're designed from somebody with a small mental archive versus somebody with a big mental archive. Okay. And I think it's going to give you guys a lot of light bulb aha moments, but before we actually get to that, I want to take the smallest moment to talk to you guys about something that I'm releasing today that I'm very excited about. You can, you know what? I'm not even going to say that yet. Research Revolution, a lot of you know about this. A lot of you are in Re Research Revolution already, but if you are not, this is your next most logical step in terms of building your mental archive. So I wanted to speak a little bit about that to you guys today before we get to the next ses section of brain priming together. Research Revolution, it's an in-depth seven video masterclass that deals exactly with what every seller is missing in their strain and struggle to reach six figures. Understanding what shoppers are actively looking for and priming your brain to simply know what makes the most sense when sitting down to design is what creates six figure sellers. Right. And that's what Research Revolution is all about. So here we've got all of the modules inside of Research Revolution. These are just like the overarching modules. There's lots of videos inside each one or, if, or one or two videos inside each one. Uh, the understanding, the brain priming and research. This is what we're going over today, but on absolutely new levels. So you're going to learn what exactly research and brain priming is and why it's absolutely vital. Then it's going to be the meat of the program, which is the Instagram brain priming and design, exploring all the reasons Instagram is truly an absolute goldmine when it comes to research and watching me execute my exact Instagram process, creating designs in real time based on the inspiration that I find on Instagram in front of you while I'm screen sharing my process. Then we talk about Pinterest and Etsy, learning how to leverage both of these for pinpointing what's in demand and uncovering trends that are hot and highly searched at any given time. And then the bonus vault has two bonus Instagram trend videos, actually three now because I just added one in 2024, brand new uh, bonus video on Instagram brain priming and Canva design execution with design templates for you guys to use after you watch this video. So if you have research revolution and you haven't seen this in the bonus vault yet, it was just added for 2024. You need to go watch this video. I think it's 20 or 30 minutes long. And I just put it in there a few weeks ago with design templates. So go watch it. Okay. Really quickly now presenting a brand new design offer that you guys have never seen before, unless you were in the ultimate wolf challenge, you guys got first priority to this uh, new course, but it's called design like a mega seller. Okay. This course, it's totally workshop based. So it's different from design bootcamp in that it's basically all videos of me recording things live, doing design edits and all of that sort of stuff filled with nothing but real time example videos. I'm actually diving into design right in front of your eyes, okay? And the, it's got a video with the number one hack to the fastest sales possible when you're first starting out, which is the best seller design template creation. So if you guys haven't heard me say this before, the best thing you can do when you're a new seller is find best seller designs and use the structure of that design as a template to create your own design. So you're creating a unique design, but you're using the structure of the design. This is an entire video. The first video in Design Like a Mega Seller is dedicated to showing you exactly how to create bestseller design templates yourself, but I also create them for you as a starting point to show you exactly how to do it. Then there's design workshops. You can see a little example here. This is what it looks like of me in Canva, moving stuff around, editing, doing a bunch of stuff to make designs better. There are six videos in a row. They're, they're all 30 to 45 minutes long of me just doing design edits. My students tell me they learn more about design in these editing sessions more so than any other resource that I give. Okay. So there's six of those videos. And then we've got the bestseller design breakdown, two videos where I'm basically going through Etsy bestsellers and breaking down exactly why I believe that they are bestsellers. So you can help get underneath uh, the whys 
of bestseller listings. And then there's a big bonus vault with design makeovers where I'm taking so-so designs and turning them into what I believe could be bestseller designs. There's a recommended font list. There's design, there's even more design templates. I believe there's over 25 design templates I created total in Canva, which basically is worth the price of the course itself. If you buy these individually, you can, I'm going to give you guys the link to buy either research revolution or design like a mega seller. If you buy them individually, you can both for $149. Um, but if you buy them together, it would be 300 for the next 24 hours. I'm including a special offer for workshop members only. You can get them both for 197. So if you're not in either of these, you can join both for 197 or you can buy them individually for 149. Okay. $197 means you're saving $99 if you bought them separately. So this is a really, really, really big deal. Uh, the design, like a mega seller course, it should be more expensive. It really should. There's so much in there, but I want you guys to have this information. So I'm making it super duper cheap for what's in there, but you will not be disappointed. It is literally jam packed. So again, 48 hours only on this bundle. I'm going to drop the link in a moment. You can also go to the Instagram, uh, my Instagram bio and get the link right now. If you're on your cell phone watching this, you can go to my Instagram bio and get that link, or you can go to www.beawolfbiz.com forward slash special offer. Okay. Thank you guys for sticking with me through that. Let's get back into our brain priming. Okay. So we're going to start with designs that I typically will see most newbie sellers with a small mental archive. These are the types of designs that they create. Okay. And I've said this before, when I... I'm looking at designs that people are making, I can tell how much time they put into researching. I can basically tell you how big your mental archive is by looking at your designs. And this is something that most people don't understand. They're like, well, how would you, how would you even know that? I know because I have a big mental archive. I've done this for a very long time. I've spent a lot of time researching. And when people have big mental archives, their designs hit the nail on the head. Maybe the demand will waver here and there because it's not exactly, uh, it's not possible to nail demand every single time or else people would have nothing but bestsellers stocked in their shop, right? But in terms of structure of design, color choices, the way that you're laying something out, the way that you're going about creating designs, typically people with, with large mental archives will go about that in a very consistent way. Designs like this, Small mental archive, this person, I can almost guarantee, has absolutely no idea what they're doing, and they've spent almost no time doing any research at all. They're just like, hmm, I want to create a butterfly design, and this is usually what it comes out looking like. I'm not saying this is wrong. You have to start somewhere, but this is a huge example of why you need to do a lot of research before you just dive into creating designs and then start asking where your sales are. You get the level of results that you deserve. And so the more research that you do, the bigger your mental archive is going to grow, the easier you can start creating designs that actually work, and the more effortlessly you can start trend combining without even trying, right? So this is a no bueno design. This is also a no bueno design. I kind of stuck with the butterfly theme here. So what, what's happening here? It, it's just an atrocity altogether. We've got a big butterfly on a cluster of flowers with smaller little butterflies trailing off. I understand what they were trying to do. With small mental archive designs, I can always see what they were shooting for, but they miss. And it's like, it's like trying to aim for something that you really have no idea how to get to on a design level. So you shoot and you miss because you're missing pieces in between. And this is why yesterday when I talked about the mental archive, I said that it's sort of the, it's sort of adding connections, mental connections into your brain. When you don't have those connections, the process of going from a bad design to a good design is really, really, really hard because you can't make those emotional mental design connections. You don't have the references in your mental archive in order to do so. So you end up just creating a bunch of stuff that it just doesn't hit. It's just not hitting. And these designs that I'm showing you right now are a really, really good example of that because they are missing the mark right? This one too. The font is way too small. They jammed a bunch of butterflies into one little rectangle. I can see exactly where they were trying to go with this because there are a lot of bestsellers on Etsy with this general range of formats in terms of like the butterflies being in rows. 
but it actually looks nothing like <laughs> they actually look nothing like this one does. So this is a person who saw something that worked, but they didn't understand the details of that bestseller. And this is why those videos of like the, the bestseller breakdowns that I have in design, like a mega seller, that's why they're so important. You guys, everything that I create, all of the information that I teach you is for a very specific purpose, because I see the things that people are missing and what I do is try to create the content that's going to help you fill in those gaps. So when you yourself are trying to make things happen, you don't have these missed connections. You don't end up with designs that look like this because you've resourced yourself with the correct knowledge. You're holding the right map. You know what to do to make it look like a bestseller instead of a design that misses the mark, right? Here's another one. We've got a butterfly that's laying on a rose. It is underwhelming to say the least, right? And again, the seller is just trying to create a unique butterfly design, but there is no emotional connection here. Maybe a few people would be like, oh, but I like the design. Yes, you could like the design, but have absolutely no desire to buy it or wear it. Just because it's a pretty design means nothing uh, about its level of demand. I'm going to say that again, because I think a lot of people are confused about this. Just because you like a design, just because you look at a design and be like, well, I don't really see anything wrong with that. That's not a bad design. I'm not saying these are necessarily all bad designs. Whatever this is, it's fine, right? Like, okay, it's not ugly, but it's also not in demand. This is not what people are looking for. It is lacking complete and total emotional connection. What is this representing? What emotions, what, what trend is this nailing? What's, what is the connection here? There is none. And so it falls flat. And that's why I wanted to show you guys these examples today is because it's so crucial to absolutely 100% be solid in understanding the difference between a pretty design and a design that people are like, oh yeah, I like that. They can like it and not, and have zero desire to buy it or wear it. And that's something I think a lot of people do not understand, okay? Antisocial butterfly. This one isn't necessarily a bad design. There are definitely a few things that I would change. I don't think it has the level of connection that it could because there are a lot of antisocial butterfly. This is like sort of like a punny thing that a lot of people have done on Etsy, so I do not recommend it. Um, but it's one that I can see somebody tried to shoot for, and I think it missed the mark in a few areas. Again, it's not a bad design. Somebody wouldn't look at it and be like, oh, that's hideous, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about level of demand. There are a few little tweaks I would make here. One of them, like changing the script font, we could, we could find a, a much better script font. I would put space in between the letters on antisocial. I would choose sort of like a sketch butterfly instead. And these are the type I I'm not I wasn't even planning on continuing to reference design like a mega seller, the new course, but these are the type of little design elements in those videos that is going to shift your perception of how to create bestseller designs. The little details of like, no, I wouldn't use that. I would do this, or I would trade this in for that. That's when you start to make little connections in your brain that helps you sit down on Canva and say, okay, actually now I, I do think it would make more sense to do this, 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 and this in order to increase the emotional connection instead of just creating a design I think is pretty because now I know that's not what it's all about. All right, so now we're going to talk about designs that in this niche that actually work, sticking with the butterfly trend. So this is a really good example, a bestseller, by the way, of simplistic designs. This is one design element. Now, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this because you are not technically supposed to use design elements from Canva that don't have another word or some sort of alteration to it that you didn't add things and create your own unique design from it. So technically, this is illegal to do, but it still is a bestseller, right? Regardless of whether or not this seller got in trouble, I have no idea, but I just wanted to show you guys that issue itself aside, the fact that this design became a bestseller. It's one color. It's a small one element butterfly in the center of a chest. And it emotionally connects in such a strong way that it became a bestseller. People saw it and it resonated so hard that multiple people bought it and it became a bestseller. And so it's not about how pretty something is. It's not about how complex something is. 
And sometimes things can be so simple and sell so well that it'll absolutely rock your world and blow your damn mind like this butterfly thing, right? It depends on how good you are at emotional connection. It depends how big your mental archive is because a lot of people will try to create super simple designs and they will miss the mark even in their simplicity because they miss the emotional connection. Sometimes it's harder to create simple designs than it is to create more complex designs because you need to have a better understanding of emotional connection, which you can only get by building a mental archive. Here's another good one. This is a bestseller as well. This is more of a mystical sort of cottage core type of feeling design, uh, a really retro color palette with like the dusty rose, the blacks and the browns, got those little sparkles in between. It's just a really pretty design that's quite large, but also simple, right? This is probably, it's three main design elements. I think these are on Canva and they added the little sparkles in. Still very, very simple and straightforward, but it's got emotional connection. This is a good trend combo, by the way. It's taking the butterfly trend and the cottage core slash retro slash mystical trend and it's putting it all together. Uh, Dreamer, this is a good one too. This is retro. It's feeling a little bit like a band T again. It's got some of the distressed, uh, texture in the font. It's a good trend com combination and it's done very well. It's a little less simple, but it's what people are looking for. It's emotionally connecting. It's melting trends together to create a hyper trending design. Here's a great example of a better way to do the antisocial butterfly design. Again, how could it be more simple? It's one line, antisocial butterfly underneath a butterfly design element that's an outline and the the font is extremely straightforward they've got a little period at the end which i don't think they really needed but uh all together the simplicity is what sold this design the other design that missed the mark it tried to get a little too fancy we didn't need all of that the butterfly trend a lot of times succeeds with a, a very a very simple straightforward structure and outlines and fonts don't even have to be anything crazy, right? But again, you have to have the mental archive foundation to be able to make these decisions and understand whether or not they are the correct decisions to make. So if you're in the position right now where you're a new seller, you're, you're a little bit less savvy with design, you might be saying, Brittany, I sit down and I have no idea what to do. It's your mental archive. And a lot of times people like, uh, it happened a few times in the, the wolf challenge this year where people will post designs and I'll say, yeah, it's good in, in that it's a pretty design, but go back to the drawing board in terms of your mental archive and the research that you're doing. It's a pretty design, but it's missing the emotional connection. And I know when designs are missing the emotional connection, the only thing that that seller can do to improve is go back to the drawing board and keep researching until more connections are made in their head in that mental archive subconscious space to where they can shift that design into more emotional connection, right? So we're gonna, um, oh, one more example here of the butterfly trend, make your dreams happen. Love this one. So again, mystical retro trend combination with really pretty sparkles, make your dreams happen is quite a generic quote. I would not recommend quotes that generic, but in this case, it worked pretty well. Uh, love that they decided to put it on this buttery yellow t-shirt. That was a really good decision. It's got a lot of that retro emotional connection and the way that they structured this design was very smart. Love this one. Okay, now we're going to look at the Western trend and we're going to start with designs that missed the mark first. Keep it wild. This design obviously misses the mark. Now, it could be done better with just a few tweaks but it's looking a little cartoony. It's looking like the brown that they chose is kind of ugly. It's just, it's not coming together for me. I also don't love that they put it on a white t-shirt. They could have really made a lot more emotionally based decisions that they obviously didn't have a big enough mental archive to do so. So it kind of came out a bit lackluster. Same here, this one's quite a bit worse. They decided to put the three lines of howdy with a big, skull design element. I don't know why they chose the bright pink howdy. I don't even think they probably have an answer for that either. I don't know why they didn't choose to make the design element smaller. It's this one is pretty, uh, 
objectively ugly. <laughs> it's just not aesthetically pleasing, um, but it's also, there's no demand here in terms of the way that it's structured. The Howdy t-shirts are great. I can see what they're shooting for, but they definitely miss the mark. And I can tell this person has a small mental archive. I can tell that they just saw a few bestsellers that were doing really well and thought, oh, I'm going to create my own version of that. And then they just let them turn themselves loose and it, and it totally just fell flat. It's not where you go in, in life. It's who goes with you. Uh, this one's really cute because it's got the dog on the back with, with the cowboy. The idea is very cute. It looks very generic. The font they chose is very weird and like bold and like bubbly almost. The color choice makes no sense. So many different things here that could have changed to make this a really, really great design because the emotional connection between like the Western and dog being your best friend type of trend it's a good idea. Combining those two things is a good idea, but it's causing, I mean, the way that they did it, just, it, it loses you. There's no emotional connection here. It's a cute idea, but the execution was all wrong. Okay. This one is also, um, quite difficult to look at cowgirls, little bit angel, whole lot of outlaw, totally small mental archive. This is the type of design I see. And I say, okay, this person needs to go way back to research and they need to do it for a while before they start again. The color choices, the weird random color choices, the two lines on the other, on either side of Angel. Like, again, I can tell they saw a design that might have been similar to this. And so they wanted to structure it the same way. Completely misses the mark. This is not the type of design that I think would ever have a bestseller badge. There's no emotional connection. It's unesthetically pleasing. If that's a word, it's aesthetically unpleasing, I guess is a better way to say that. Uh, and it, it, again, I just, I don't know what else to say, but misses the mark. Don't mess with cowgirls. The way that this one was done, it's close. It's kind of like the antisocial butterfly design that I showed you that also missed the mark. This one is close. The idea is there. The design element, I don't even have a problem with it, but there's just a few, like, why is cowgirls two words, by the way? There's just details missing. There's connections that were missed that make it a flop instead of a hit. And these are the details you need to know in order to be become really great at consistently turning out bestseller after bestseller. So let's talk about some of the good ones now. Cosmic Cowboy, so good. One all white design. They kept it very simple. The font choice is really cool. The design element they chose with the with the cowboy's arm going through the O in Cosmic, the circle around the bull, the way they chose to put it on black, everything here is so good. I'm loving the way that this turned out. The hell I won't, the emotional connection immediately here. All of the choices made down to the mock-up were brilliant. Design element, the font choice, the colors, the mock-up, perfect. Emotional connection galore. This is right on trend with what people are actually actively searching for when they're looking for cowgirl shirts on Etsy, right? It's got a little bit of that feminist blend in there. Feminist Western trend combo. Same thing with this one. Stay wild. This, was, this one was a bestseller forever. All red design. It's got a little feel. It's got a little feminist feel to it. Stay wild. Very simple, but super emotionally connective and impactful quote. And then we've just got the, the plain black outline of cowboy boots as a bestseller on an ivory comfort colors t-shirt. I would have loved to have seen the cowboy boots in brown, by the way, but this became a bestseller anyways. So who am I to say? But this design is so simple and it's, you know, a total of nine design elements, but it's got the emotional connection. Long live cowgirls. The color choices, again, feels retro. Everything about it is just cute. You look at it and go, yes, that's not only is it cute, I want to buy it. Not only is it cute, I want to wear it, right? Because we talked about a design can be cute and not in demand. This is an example of in demand and very cute at the same time. So how are we feeling? I think we should do another giveaway. Uh, and we're going to do that in just a second. But before we do, I want to tell you guys, I'm extending the Top Seller Secret offer because there was very popular demand to do so. I have so many emails from people asking if they I'd give them just 24 more hours because they need permission from their husband or they missed out yesterday and haven't been able to watch the replay yet. Whatever your reasoning may, may be, you've got 24 more hours to get into uh, Top Seller Secret with the bonus of the entire week of lives 
five straight days for top seller secret students only specifically on exactly what I would be doing every single day. I'm going to be talking about exactly what I would be doing if I were trying to build an explosive multi six figure shop in 2024, five full days of talking about what I'd be doing with mockups, what I'd be doing with erank.com and SEO, what I'd be doing with designs, which trends I'd be focusing on, what I'd be doing with my shop aesthetic and my shop branding and so much more. Uh, the top seller secret link you can also find uh, when I put this, it's beowulfbiz.com forward slash special offer. The research revolution and mega seller design like a mega seller course bundle is in there. Top seller secret is in there. Any offer that I've talked about in this uh, workshop is going to be at beowulfbiz.com forward slash special offer. I put it in all in one place so you guys could access it easier. Lauren says already bought it. Amazing. Design like a mega seller is a game changer. If you already have research revolution, go get design like a mega seller individually. If you're already in design bootcamp, it's totally different. It's going to bring you to another new level. Like you guys, you need it. I'm in TSS, but not sure what extra class should I do next? Ivana, I would highly recommend research revolution and design like a mega seller that in addition to top seller secrets is going to change your life. Uh, no top seller secret is a separate offer from these other offers. You're welcome. They're deeper dives. They're not required. Some people just require, uh, the, extra support in these areas. So I make these courses available as well. Not everybody needs them. So I don't include them in top seller secret, but they're for people who desire to up level in these particular skill sets like research or design. So I'm going to keep posting this link. So you guys have that special offer link, beowulfbiz.com forward slash forward slash special offer, uh, doing research revolution design, like a mega seller and top seller secret altogether. Oh my, yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's fire. Game changers for sure has helped my brain priming so much. Amazing. Okay. So let's talk about mental archives and trend combining now you guys tell me given what we spoke about here today what are the questions you have I can never decide what color to make a design my answer is usually white honestly but it also it also depends on your specific trend um because like we saw with that western cowgirl trend right like that made so much sense to make that uh stay wild one all red because that that red is really trending in the western niche so it's about building your mental archive if you can't decide what color to make a design um, go back to the brain priming, go back to understanding that specific, that specific niche. And what is it that, what is it that's going to resonate with people the most, right? So don't just randomly pick like, oh, that should be white or that should be black. Really deeply understand what's going on with that trend and maybe why people would want all red, why people might want it to be more simple with all white. Um, it's going to be subjective to every design. The bigger your mental archive grows, the more you're just going to naturally know what to, what to choose. Okay, if you could pick one source to brain prime, what would it be? Um, luckily, we don't have to pick, but Instagram is one of my favorite ones. I am somebody who likes to jump all over the place. So obviously every platform has its different benefits. It's extremely beneficial to brain prime on Etsy because you can see bestseller badges. You can sort by bestseller badges. You can look strictly at things that are selling best on Etsy right then and there. So that ups your ability to understand demand immediately, right? But Instagram, you're, you'll hear like a little special hack, a specific type of uh, account that I love to follow. Uh, in order to get the most demand and idea generation and prime my brain to understand designs as a whole on Instagram. There's so many layers to that as well. And then Pinterest, you can go down rabbit holes. You can find something that you really like, and then you can scroll down and look at a million other things that are just like that thing that could give you even more ideas. So I love Instagram just because of the, the width that you're able to sort of just scroll every day like it's the newspaper but Etsy is really great because you can get in direct insight into what customers are actually wanting Pinterest is really great because you can spend all day going down rabbit holes like if I I don't want to just choose one I, I want to do all of them yeah Sienna says uh, Instagram is a gold mine for sure if you know what to follow and what you're looking for which is what research revolution explains total gold mine but otherwise so is everything else like looking being able to access best sellers to see all the best seller listings of a particular niche that's a gold mine to be able to sort through a million different ideas on pinterest that's a gold mine so like everything has this really really rich benefit to it but they're all different right great question i didn't know it was illegal to use canvas design as is yes you're always supposed to add something Right. I don't think Canva is out there policing this, uh, but it is in the rule book. 
Can you expand on why the single butterfly had emotional connection? What audience is it resonating with? The others make sense to me, but not this one. This would apply to other single generic Im image ones as well too. Yeah, so the single design element in the center. So emotional connection is not simple, right? But um, sometimes we can't really explain it in words because it's an emotional thing. So that's the reason why I didn't really have a specific definition for it, even though I know the emotional connection is there. It's Brandy Melville, right? If you know Sun, if you know Brandy Melville, if you're really staying up to date, if you're following like Urban Outfitters, all of the um, e-commerce or even brick and mortar stores that I reference so often in Wolf School when I'm teaching people how to trend spot, not only online, but in the real world as well. These brands sort of set a precedent of like really simple designs that evoke some sort of feeling, but are very simplistic, right? We don't need to be complex. We don't need to be um, shiny and fancy the best the best brand to understand this more is brandy melville but you'll see girls between the ages of like 13 and i'd say like 19 wearing these things the most so it's not necessarily like i'm not I, there's no way to say like what the emotional connection is but it's a trend that is emotionally resonating just due to the simplicity you recommended the more simple designs as a beginner instead of beautiful bestseller design examples that are more complicated because it will come easier with more brain framing. Exactly. Um, but e but like the more complicated bestsellers, um, you can't get there from where you're at. So yeah, most, most newbies will sit down and want to create the complex designs and they'll think they won't get sales unless they do when they can easily just slowly baby step their way to being able to create better and better designs in in more complex ways if necessary but you guys i made thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on one bestseller design that was a bestseller for years and it was two words and one outline all one color and I already had a big mental archive at that point, but I was making the most money on my simplest designs, two seashells across the boobs of a tank top. Like, come on, how do you get more simple than that? Tens of thousands of dollars. So even though I was more advanced and I could create more complex designs, there was no need for me to. So that should never be your goal of like, oh, when I'm really good, I can create more complex designs. No, when you're really good, you'll, when you get to that point, you'll understand that you don't have to. And maybe the time will come where you do because you just have an idea and it just happens to end up that way. But creating more complex designs should never be the goal. Should I get a design like a mega seller if I already have design bootcamp? 100%, you guys. So none of my offers overlap in a way that if you get one, if you already have one and you get another, you'll be like, oh, I already learned this in this. Like I don't have offers like that. I make every offer extremely unique in that you're gonna learn something in a different way or in a, in a different form. And that's exactly how Design Like a Mega Seller is. So Design Bootcamp is me breaking down for you like kind of the fundamentals, the basics, the foundations of design. Design Like a Mega Seller is me actually in there editing designs and telling you, oh, move this curve closer to the design element and always make sure you're spacing it this way. Use this little feature in Canva in order to optimize this. Always do this color if you're using this type of design or optimize your mock-up by doing this. Like I'm telling you these tiny little things throughout, you know, the six videos of just the design edits. Also how to create a, a bestseller template. That video is about 28 minutes. I think how to create a bestseller template for most of you, that one intro video will be worth the cost of the entire course. It'll change the trajectory of your entire shop. If you actually pay attention and listen to it and take action based on that one video. So 100%, if you need support with design, get into design like a mega seller. Is there a way to get ahead of trend and trending phrases if you aren't on TikTok? Um, I don't really recommend TikTok at all. Instagram is the best way, best place to go for phrasing ideas. That's what research revolution shows you how to do really is, is to sort through it and know what to follow to find those types of phrases. Um, but yeah, I've created bestsellers from things I've seen on Instagram that I've never ever in my life seen on a shirt before. Multi bestsellers uh, from Instagram brain priming. Again, you guys, everything I teach, I don't teach it because it's fun or like I had the idea and I'm like, oh, I'd like to make a course on this. I create stuff because it's tested and proven and it's gonna get you results if you act on it. And it's the same thing for Instagram. I didn't revolve research revolution around Instagram 
uh, research because I thought it would be fun. I did it because it's really, really, really powerful if you know what you're doing while you do it. Do simple faith-based do better on Bella than Comic Colors? I was researching Etsy. Seems more band style, more busy on uh, but feminine simple. Is this accurate? It could be any shirt. Could be any shirt. So yeah, the brand thing. <laughs> You guys, honestly, I can say this is a blanket statement. Sellers pay way too much attention to what brand they're using. They really do. Comfort Colors is trending. Yes. But Gildan is still selling. Bella Canvas is still selling. Buyers do not pay as much attention as you think, as, like on a, as a whole. They do not pay as much attention as you think to the actual brand of the t-shirt. If it's oversized, if it's cute, they're going to buy it. So yeah, people have preferences. Of course, there are exceptions. But for the most part, whether you're selling Gildan, whether you're selling Bella, whether you're selling Comfort Colors, you can make any of those things work. People pay, they overthink way too much about it and they pay way too much attention and worry way too much about it. I hope that gives you a little relief. I've heard people say shirt type is sometime depending on niche, not that far along yet to know trying to grasp that. I don't think so, Tess. I don't think so at all. It reminds me of Delilah's late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, um, 100%. Brandy Melville and Urban Outfitters and PacSun are, are all heavily Y2K influenced right now because that's kind of where the, the trend world is. And it's very much so. I miss Delilah's every day. I used to get the Delilah's magazine. Do you think it's a good time to open an Etsy shop or there's too many sellers now? Leah, I will never tell you there's too many sellers because of the way that I structure uh, my blueprint. It will never be saturated because of the way that we go about doing things, making database decisions. There has never been a bigger opportunity or a better time to start an Etsy shop. I am not bullshitting you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, but only if you're making database decisions. So the problem is this rumor is spreading that it's too saturated. It's not a good time to open an Etsy shop. Etsy's dead. T-shirts are dead way too many people already doing it. I hear this constantly, right? And the reason is because people open a shop and like the example I gave yesterday, they open a shop and they're like, I like hibiscus flowers. I'm going to make a hibiscus shirt shop. And then they, they don't make any database decisions. They don't do any research. They're just listing stuff that they like. And then they're like, I'm not making any sales. Etsy's too saturated. Print on demand is too saturated. It's like, no, you're not making database decisions. You haven't done any research work. You're not making decisions and choices based on customers and what they're actively actually looking for. You're making decisions based on what you want to do. Of course, it's not working. Business doesn't run that way. You have to have a plan. You have to have a blueprint. You have to have data that you can rely on and make choices based on that data in order to actually make any headway at all. So people are just joining up, throwing shit at the wall and then proclaiming it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. You're not good at it. You're not doing anything that you're supposed to, right? That's what I tell those people. They often get mad, <laughs> but it's only because it's true. So when you're making database decisions, you're, you're narrowing that window of, um, of chances that you're not going to do well, right? The more data you base your decisions on, the better you get at researching, the larger your mental archive is, the less saturated Etsy gets, baby. There is so much opportunity and there always will be. You might think that's a big statement. I've been doing this 10 years. Nothing has slowed down anywhere. I mean that. Nothing has slowed down. Nothing has got too saturated. Should you be creating Merry Christmas t-shirts and trying to compete with that? No, duh, no. Why would you try to compete with what literally everybody else is doing? There are very specific things. And when you've got E-Rank on your side, it's very hard to lose. There are very specific things that you have to do in order to ensure you put your best foot forward and that you can actually go move forward very clear-minded about things because you're making database decisions. I'll get off my soapbox. I heard that you recommend not to give too many choices uh, regarding colors. Should we stick to the most popular colors I see across variety of niches or should I research each specific niche to see what t-shirt colors I use in that particular niche? Jennifer, I think the bigger your mental archive is, the, the more you can just rely on yourself to make this decision. Like looking at this design, if I'm picking six colors, what makes the most sense with this design? It's kind of the way to do it. Um, and, and don't overthink this at all. Typically the answer will be black. If it's Western, it'll be brown or sand, right? If it's book core, if it's dark academia, it's going to be sand or black or maroon, right? So yeah, know what colors are trending in that niche, but also just like common sense, rely on common sense. What makes the most sense for this particular design? 
And don't worry about doing something wrong, right? Just go for it. Signed up for Research Revolution and Design Like a Mega Seller. So excited. Yay, Charlene, I'm so, so happy. I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Um, like I said, the, for those of you that were in design or that were in the January Wolf Challenge, they got first dibs on uh, Design Like a Mega Seller and everybody in there has been loving it. So I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Is there any tutorial on YouTube about how to design in Canva that you would suggest? No, because I absolutely never watch YouTube videos and I do not suggest them either. I'm sorry. They're usually not very good. Do research at Revolution go into strategies on eRake or other SEO platforms? No, Caroline, the only database decision-making and SEO information you will find in my content is in Top Seller Secret. Research Revolution is about demand. E-rank is about data, right? Demand in a creative aesthetic way. Like what are people aesthetically looking for? What's in demand aesthetically? E-rank is about data. And the only place you will find any E-rank information, the only time I spill every, literally every E-rank secret I have is in Top Seller Secret. That's why I tell people start there. The rest are just add-ons. The rest are building blocks to, to build on top of your foundation of Top Seller Secret. What do you think of brand labeling? Printify offers it. I thought it was a cute thing. No, no one cares about the type of shirt you have. Do you think it's a nice touch or save the money? Charlene, I could not be more dead serious when I say that I can't think of anything that matters less than, than labeling your t-shirts. <laughs> uh, people do this. Sellers do this because it feels really good. It's really fun. It's like, ooh, I have my own brand. Meanwhile, customers do not give a shit. They could not care less if their t-shirt has your shop name in it or not. It doesn't mean a thing. Save the money. Do you think t-shirts sell better than sweatshirts? Is it seasonal? It's very seasonal, but I always keep both in my shop year round. People wear sweatshirts in the summer. People buy t-shirts in the winter. Do both. I realize it doesn't matter what I think or what I like. It's what the research says will sell. Lana, I'm crowning you today's queen. That's all I ever want to hear somebody say. It's all, that's the most important thing. That's the most important light bulb moment that anybody can have. It literally does not matter what you think or what you like. What the research tells you will work is what you need to go with. Period. Every time. You're a queen. Do you re recommend having too many different types of items in your shop or does it matter? I've sold lots of mugs and just recently getting started with clothes. Nope. Do it all. Do whatever your heart desires, what feels like the most fun, as long as you're not doing it in an attempt to make sales faster. We talked about this yesterday. It's the energy that you're coming from. If you're creating a bunch of listings just because you want faster sales, you're going to miss the mark. But if you're creating a bunch of listings based on inspiration and flow and like, oh, I just learned this and I can put this together and do that and this and that. And it's coming from just a place of like, I love the idea creation. This makes a lot of sense. This is actually working. I want to create more of it because I think my customers will love it. That's when you start winning. When you're creating a bunch of stuff because you want to make sales faster, there's this weird, desperate energy and sense of urgency that's going to drive you in exactly the wrong direction. Don't do that. I got into research revolution and design like a mega seller. So excited. Yes, Brie. Okay. So when you guys go start going through design, like a mega seller, get into the be a wolf biz general Facebook group and tell me what your thoughts are. I can't wait to hear what you guys say. Shelly says, thank you so much, Brittany. You're welcome. Do you use the same design for several items, cups, shirts, sweatshirts, give them options? Um, yeah. If I think it makes sense for multiple products, I'll put it on multiple products for sure. Do you leave Christmas listings up all year or deactivate for a few months? I leave them up all year. Yep. Oh, sweet. I'm the queen. Your, that observation, that statement, nothing makes me happier. I understand not necessary, but would it be a, a good idea to have a newsletter? No, don't waste your time. Focus on building, focus on <clears throat> getting better, focus on becoming more of an expert. A newsletter is a tactic to get more sales. We're not focused on tactics. We're focused on becoming an expert so we can attract and not chase, right? There may be room for a newsletter way down the road. But newsletters are chasing. You're trying to get more sales through this tactic, right? If you become an expert, you can attract hundreds, thousands of shoppers and have, you know, $200,000 months on Etsy by doing nothing but being an expert. That's the, that's the goal I have for all of you is you get so good at this. Your mental archive gets so big that you don't even have to think about tactics anymore. It's not about tactics. It's just about getting better and becoming more of an expert. 
Pricing and discount questions. What price do you recommend selling Gildan sweatshirts? Do you recommend setting up daily, the daily sales? Um, all of my pricing recommendations are in Top Seller Secret. And I do not recommend sales ever, actually, um, based on research and testing. They don't actually work. If you have listing already but are now learning different things, should you delete all your others before or or more, the more the better. Not necessarily the more the better, but just don't waste your time deleting things. They don't, it doesn't matter if they're there or not. Just start creating better. Move on, move forward, forget about what you did, move forward. They'll expire, you know. Um Jason says Lana might be the queen, but the artist earlier is the king. Yeah, you guys want to talk about that really quick. If that person is still in the meeting, I hate you, by the way. And Jason, if that was you, you're in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that was it was extremely funny it was extremely funny but it is the last thing I need happening in the middle of one of my workshops when I'm in flow <laughs> do you use social media at all for sales or just rely on Etsy traffic no social media no social media whatsoever uh no ads no social media um we are just leveraging the 96 million shoppers that are already on Etsy. And all of my mega sellers have done that. I said this yesterday, the number one, uh, the number one thing that people ask my mega sellers in uh, the interviews that I do with them is, did you use ads? Because people don't believe that it can be done without ads, but it 110% can. All my mega sellers always say yes. They always say, yes, I did it completely organically. I've learned to list and let it go. So liberating. Love it, Lana. Lana, you are on the six-figure trajectory 110%. The things that you're saying, you've got it. And I, I'm not worried about you at all. Uh, no social media. So we don't even need to have a Facebook business page under the shop name. No, you guys, you don't need to have anything but expertise. The thing about it is I've talked about this recently before the algorithm rewards demand. The algorithm rewards demand. So if you, uh, if you Sorry, one second. Um, if you are always working to become a master at demand by brain priming and by uh, <clears throat> by topping yourself in terms of like, I know this now, and now I know this, and now I know this, and now I know this about trends, like you're always getting better at understanding them. You're always creating those connections. That's the only thing you need to know. In yesterday's live, I showed you how you can have absolute shit titles and have a bestseller badge because your demand is that good. You don't need ads. You do not need a Facebook page. You certainly don't need an Instagram shop page, right? You 100% do not. Okay, I was able to kick the troublemaker out. I've never had that happen before and uh, hopefully it will never happen again. <laughs> um... Just turned off my Etsy ads yesterday. Still got a sale. Thank you, Brittany. You're welcome. Yeah, people just don't trust, right? The reason I know why people ask my mega sellers. I know why that's the first question they ask because they don't believe it's possible. They're like, I bet, I bet all mega sellers have to have ads. And Brittany just says that because it sounds good. It's no. My mega sellers are mega sellers organically. And I teach this stuff because it works. Turn my ads off because they're all my profits last month, like you've said a million times. So scary turn them off. Yeah. There's, it's just, you're wasting money, throwing it to the wind. Good job, Mariana. It's, it's not scary. You just have to double down on demand. That's the work. I love the fact that you can list something and let Etsy do the work. It is fun and low stress. Don't have to force, find, or beg anyone to buy. You don't. And the, the reason why people are so anxious about this is because they're not willing to get good. They're not willing to master demand. They're not willing to do the hard work of researching. They're like, well, why, why can't I just turn ads on and then throw some money at it and have that solve the problem? Okay, let me know how that goes. It doesn't work that way, right? Why should you not have the description be somewhat the same from what Printify has? Bought top seller, 
bought top seller and watched six classes today. You're incredible. Thank you, Casey. I'm so glad you're in. Uh, the printified descriptions are shit. Basically, there's no emotion in them. Um, there's no, it's not interesting. So buyers probably aren't going to read it. It looks very stock. It's just like the default thing that almost everybody has. So I, you, you want people to read your descriptions because it's got really important information that you can eliminate, um, as many, as many exchanges as possible. And you can help people know what to expect better. So crafting your own descriptions, like I have description templates in Top Seller Secret that I used in my own shops that worked really well. You break them up into paragraphs, you add cute little emojis, you kind of like direct where and how people should read it. It's it's just smart business to be able to educate your customer in a way that, that flows very easily. Unpopular opinion, but real talk. If we can't afford Top Seller Secret just yet, can we get started with others that may be more of our weakness and get traction then circle back to TSS? Kamaria, 100%. Um, start at Wolf School even, start anywhere. You're not gonna join any of my offers and be like, oh, I'm so lost, what do I do? Like, they're all going to help you move forward. 110%. If you can start with a 199 bundle today, that's your best bet. It's gonna get you really far. Obviously you need the strategic foundation. It's very important. And I highly suggest people start with top seller secret if they can, if there's any way that they can make it happen, make it happen. But my other offers are always going to help you as well. Yeah. Holly says, I learned, I started with Wolf School only and I learned a lot. Totally. Tiffany Wolf School is my monthly trend spotting membership. Uh, it's a weekly, it's weekly content that focus on, that focuses on becoming more of an expert. So the reason why I offer that is like people get into top seller secret. And then if top seller secret is your foundation, Wolf School is going to be part of the, the building blocks. It's $67 per month. Um, I would suggest waiting until February for that. I'll give you guys the link, but I have a, a special offer for February coming up for Wolf School, but wait for February. Um, but, but all of the other offers that I do offer outside of, of top seller secret, uh, are building blocks. The mind and mindset motivation stuff in old school is the bomb. Yeah. There's two, there, two of the weeks are dedicated to trends. One is a bestseller breakdown. One is a specific trend. Uh, there's a mindset and motivation week. There's a group coaching call. There's a design workshop. Uh, there's so much in old school. What's the mega seller template you mentioned earlier? I came in late. Uh, that is in the design like a mega seller new course reign. If you go to uh, the link that I'm putting here, you can read all about it. Mindset and motivation is worth the price of admission, but also the design workshops are fire. I'm so glad you think so, Holly. Hi, Lemon. Lemon has come to join us. Come here. <clears throat> So yeah, you guys have options. Don't think that you have to start in Top Seller Secret. That is highly recommended because again, it's your strategic foundation. But if you want to start at a lower investment just to test my uh, to test my content or just to learn a little bit to see if you trust me fully, you can totally start with the smaller the smaller ones. Uh, yes, you can see her face. She's a very cute girl. She's a very cute girl. I'm obsessed with Lemon and Teddy, but she's my baby. I know you said don't offer sales, but do you offer Etsy automated discounts for favorited or add to carts? Um, I would say like, it's fine if you want to do that, but it's not going to make a big difference. Again, it's a tactic that's not going to make too big of a difference. Uh, you won't hear me talking about doing stuff like that to chase because it, it doesn't work. If it did work, I would talk about it. If creating a newsletter or running a bunch of discounts or running a sale works to get you sales faster, I would teach you it, but it doesn't. Lemon is your firstborn doggo. Yes, she is. Uh, oh yeah, Anna, totally forget to, forgot to mention that extremely important uh, piece. Wolf School gives you access to an Instagram account full of accounts you can follow for brain priming. Yeah. So Wolf School is going to really help you with brain priming as well. You get access to an exclusive Instagram accounts for Wolf School members only. And I basically post like brain priming content to the Wolf School stories every day, or I try to every day. So you see stuff that I see and I'm adding it to the stories. 
Um, and then you can follow the accounts. There's like 700 or more of them on the Wolf School exclusive Instagram account. You can follow those accounts on your own uh, designated Instagram account to start brain priming yourself every day. I started with the smaller courses, books, and the free content have learned so much and just purchased Top Seller Secret. Brittany is the real deal. Oh, I love you, Rosalie. Thank you. Rosalia. I keep saying Rosalie. It's Rosalia. What's the difference between uh, Research Revolution and Wolf School? Research Revolution is like, it's breaking everything down. Wolf School is sort of like, um, it's talking about specific current trends. Research Revolution shows you how to research. It breaks down exactly how to research and then how to execute on the research. Wolf School is like, here's what I'm seeing is trending and why. So they're both really, really, really valuable, but for different, different reasons. Like Wolf School is seeing what you're learning in Research Revolution in action. It's me doing it for you, basically. But you also need to know how to do it yourself on a technical level. So I made Research Revolution available so you could actually get the breakdown. And I'm holding your hand through every step of the process. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions on Instagram too, if you guys have them. Is general store okay, multiple niches or customers? Mindy, yes, I would say that's that's where to begin. That's my scientist detective gymnast phase that I break down in Top Seller Secret. Um, but I would also say don't plan to be general or plan to be niche. Follow the data. Uh, do you use Everbee or other paid programs besides E-Rank in your offers? No, E-Rank is literally the only thing you need. I have used every single customer data uh, data platform and E-Rank is the most brilliant, the easiest, the most straightforward. Other people love Everbee, they love Marmalade and they want to fight with me about E-Rank and that's fine, but you don't need anything but E-Rank. You only need one single feature inside of E-Rank. Those of you with Top Seller Secret know the power of this one single feature. It is incredible. It's so easy. A, a toddler could do it. It's color coded. You're not like running numbers or creating spreadsheets. It's so straightforward and it's absolutely brilliant. It's the most powerful thing that you can do for your shop. You're welcome, Mindy. Follow the data, girlfriend. Uh, when I bought the top seller secret offer, I mentioned that I was going to get one month of, yeah, the code is in the code is in the welcome module, Jojo of top seller secret. I have a few listings that are getting a lot of views and favorites, but only a few sales. I know this means I'm on the right track, but I'm struggling with figuring out how to expand on these designs. Allison, are you in Top Seller Secret? Because I show you exactly how to expand on things that are working in Top Seller Secret. It's an art. It's an art that I've boiled down into a science. There's very specific things that you need to pay attention to and a, and a system that you need to complete in order to do that in the uh, most efficient way. Uh, but also don't hover over your listings, right? The fact that you say you have uh, listings with a few favorites and sales, just, or a few favorites and views, you don't have sales yet. So keep creating, right? Wolf School is also super dope for the community aspect and the top seller secret fam. Sometimes being a solopreneur can be isolating. And I love that I have a community to rally with. Laura, hundred percent. The community part is one of my favorites. Mindy says, where's the E-rate content? Which course? Top seller secret only, Mindy. You need to be in top seller secret. If you want to learn to unlock the E-rank codes, get into top seller secret. I don't talk about E-rank anywhere, but top seller secret. Do you talk about prank in RR? Oh, E-rank. No, I don't talk about, I just answered this question a second ago. Um, no, E-rank is not covered in Research Revolution because Research Revolution is about learning what's in demand in terms of aesthetics, learning how to create aesthetic designs that have super high demand. E-rank is about data. So it also has to do with demand, but not aesthetic demand, data demand. So it's not included in Research Revolution. The only place I ever talk about E-rank, you guys. I've said this quite a few times in this live, but I'll say it again. You will only find E-Rank in Top Seller Secret. Lana says E-Rank all day. I could I could and do spend all day on E-Rank. Um, it's, it's the best resource you could possibly get. And it's, what, $9 a month? Um, and when I was a new seller, I tried for probably a solid two years before I understood how to use it. I would like sign up and then I would cancel my membership. I'd sign up and I'd cancel my membership. And I'm like, I'm sure there's a way to make this work. I cannot figure it out. It's so frustrating. And finally one day something clicked and I was like, this is exactly what it is. My shop fully exploded, exploded you guys. E-rank is crazy. It's not just for titles and tags, by the way. A lot of people think when I'm talking about E-rank, I'm talking about SEO. 
That's half. That's 50% of why it's so valuable. The other 50% is how to choose products based on the data you're finding. Huge, 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 huge. You use it in both ways. That's me right now. I have no idea where to look on E-Rank. Yes, you will soon, Rosalia. You will soon. Week two of Top Seller Secrets is going to blow your mind. All right. Uh, this was amazing. I'm going to one more time drop that link. If you're on Instagram and you want the link to the special offers, go to the link in my bio. Otherwise, um, that, that bundle is going to be available for 48 hours only. You guys have one more shot for 24 hours to get into Top Seller Secret and have access to that bonus five-day live. If you're already in Top Seller Secret, it's included. But we're going to wrap it up here and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 4 p.m. Same time for day three. Don't miss day three. It's going to be just as good. Thank you so much. Pure gold. Can't wait to dive into the new content. Yes. I'm so excited. Thanks again for all you do. See you tomorrow. Going back to Polish that bitch. <laughs> yes. Lifetime access to everything. The only thing that's not lifetime access is Wolf School, obviously, because it's a monthly membership. All right. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. The replay will be sent out shortly and I'll see you guys tomorrow.